안녕하세요. Hello, I'm Kang Chunyu from K Dental Clinic. The most important factors for a successful implant treatment is an accurate diagnosis and careful treatment planning. Accurately identifying factors affecting future implant prognosis, careful evaluation of bone quantity and quality. And therefore, obtaining proper initial stability are essential for a successful implant placement. An accurate diagnosis of the patient and careful treatment planning must be established. Coming up, I will divide the diagnosis and treatment plan into two parts, and this time I'll look at diagnosis and bone evaluation. There are many factors that affect clinical success of implants, and the most important is an accurate diagnosis and a reasonable treatment plan. Let's look at the contents. Preoperative consideration, second, evaluation of bone, and third, uh, the treatment plan decision. In this section, we will look at number one and two. First, preoperative considerations. First, general oral examination and second, oral examination at the surgical site. Let's look at items to be checked during a general oral examination. The first is oral hygiene, the second is the stability of occlusion, and third is whether there is paroxysm or parafunction. The wear of the occlusal surface needs to be evaluated. Fourth, for adequate surgery, you need to check whether mouth opening can be done adequately. We can test with three lipin. Finally, it is necessary to know the cause of extraction. First, oral hygiene. Even for a patient who already has a treatment plan, if the oral condition continues to be this bad, it's necessary to treat first and then to educate the patient of the importance of oral hygiene and then do the implanted treatment. If oral hygiene continues to be bad, there is high possibility of peri-implantitis. We need to bear this in mind. Second is stability of occlusion. If the stability of occlusion is not achieved as shown, prosthetic process after implant placement can be difficult. There's high possibility of overloading the implant prosthesis. As you can see, there is a severe wear on the surface, and you can assume bruxism or parafunction, very severe. Due to wear in the posterior area, 5 mm fixture was fractured. For these patients, after delivering prosthesis, you need to regularly check up to adjust occlusion. Splint or other complementary measures can help. Another item to check for adequate surgery is whether patient's mouth opens well. Three lipin tests should be done. If these three fingers can go in without difficulty, there is no obstacle in proceeding with the surgery. We use 10 mm drill a lot. For this, the patient needs to open up by 36 mm. When you put in three fingers, it is more than enough. But if not, procedures can be difficult and getting accurate placement direction can be difficult. Through questionnaire, we need to find out what caused tooth extraction. Carious or traumatic extraction have the best prognosis. Periodontal disease related extraction have moderate level of risk. Due to disease, bone destruction might have occurred. In these cases, additional surgical GBR may be needed. For uh, patients with perio disease, regular checkup is required. 
When patients grind teeth or have malocclusion after treatment, splints can be considered. After general oral examination, check the surgical site. First items to check is the rigid shape. If it's good, the inferior bone structure is good. And we can do surgery easily, but if not, there can be difficulties. Check if keratinized tissue is sufficient on both sides. This is important in maintaining implant later words. Third is periodontium type. Check whether it is thin or thick biotype, especially in the anterior region. For thin biotype, you need to pay more attention. Also, adjacent teeth and opposing teeth need to be checked. Whether adjacent teeth are tilted mesially or opposing teeth are extruded, whether there is normal occlusion and there is sufficient space. Occlusion, check whether it is normal or if there is crossbite. Uh, on the anterior, how is the smile line? Check before surgery, so you need to pay more attention ahead. First is the ridge shape. If there is sufficient space in the ridge and if there is attached to gingiva, you can do surgery without concern. Very easy. But a lot of times, it is atrophied and narrow. So when we do surgery, if there's not enough attached to gingiva, GBR for free gingival graft may be needed, requiring more attention. If there is severe deformity, we can assume that severe bone resorption have occurred and additional surgery like GBR may be required. Another thing to evaluate is periodontium type. You need to check whether it is thick or thin biotype. Generally, in the case of thick biotype, recession does not really occur, but for thin biotype, Recession occurs, so you can consider minimal invasive surgery. Especially in anterior region, it is aesthetics is important, so you need to pay more attention. In general, for thin biotype, if you check the probe, if you can see through, this is the thin biotype. In thin biotype, as you can see, after you do prosthesis, you can see that there is gingival recession. Aesthetic anterior region, if the patient has thin biotype, recession can occur more easily, so you need to be more careful. Next to consider is the distance with opposing teeth. For prosthetic retention, minimum abutment length is 4 mm and occlusal surface of prosthesis need to be at least 1 mm. The distance from alveolar crest to opposing teeth need to be more than 5 mm. However, due to extrusion of opposing teeth, if there is short vertical space, you can do negative intrusion first and then proceed with implant surgery. As you can see, in teeth number 47, you can see that it's missing. If implant surgery is necessary, number 17 is severely extruded. In this case, implant surgery cannot be done immediately. And first, with orthodontic treatment, extruded teeth need to be pushed back and implant treatment then can be proceeded. You can place mini screw and you can orthodontically treat the extruded teeth. 
However, there can be many restraints, time or refusal of the patient or the cost. You can just do root canal treatment and remove the extruded tooth, do crown treatment and proceed with implant surgery. After we do extraction, in order to prevent extrusion of opposing teeth, we have to do preventative fixation. In the posterior molar region, when you do restoration, there are multiple cases where interarch space is not enough. So we need to pay more attention to it. As you can see in the posterior molar region, the interarch distance is very lacking. We have to also check the position of the opposing tooth where implant is going to be placed. Number 37, implant needs to be placed here, but number 27 is slightly buckly inclined. In these cases, when we place implant, the most important thing to consider is occlusion. If we can, considering this, we can place it a little bit buckly and then you'd be able to provide prosthesis without difficulty and provide optimum occlusion. Next is evaluating smile line. In the anterior region, if there is high smile line, you can get a lot of stress and if you make the smallest mistake, it can affect aesthetics very severely. If it is medium or low, even if it is aesthetic region, we may have a little bit less stress and place implant with more confidence. Next is evaluation of bone. Implant is placed where bone is and it gets adequate stability from there. Bone evaluation is therefore very important. Bone evaluation, bone quantity, and bone quality or bone density. Let's look at bone quantity. As you can see, if there is sufficient amount of bone in the area where we're going to place the implant, it will be very easy. However, in a lot of cases, after extraction, bone is resorbed and not enough bone is remaining. We have to overcome many obstacles and may have to do additional surgery like GBR. As you can see, the patient has been wearing denture for, for a very long time and bone resorption is very severe. The patient really wanted implant surgery, so uh, I overcame many obstacles, but I was able to do this and there were many difficulties regarding uh, prosthetic treatment as well. So if the patient does not have a lot of bone, we need to pay more attention. The bone that we know, there are hard bone, normal bone, and soft bone. First, in the case of hard bone, there is a high possibility of heat generation. You have to use a sharp drill and sufficient cooling needs to be done. Sufficient drilling is required so that when we place the implant, we can prevent locking. You need to pay attention to that. As you can see, I was going to place the implant in number 46. It's very radio-opaque, and we can assume it's a very hard bone. In this case, if we don't drill sufficiently and just place the implant, the following consequence can occur. On the left, as you can see, the mount has been fractured. It's broken. I used a wrench and I tried to place the implant a little bit deeper and fixture was broken and it was fractured and mount was stuck. At the time, there was no kit to remove the fixture. I used a flat driver, applied its strong force on the other side and I had a lot of difficulty. In order to prevent this, we need to do sufficient drilling in hard bone. This is opposite case. This is very soft bone. For soft bone, it is very difficult to get initial stability. 
So therefore, you need to do under drilling by one or two sizes. So final drilling, one or two steps down, under drilling needs to be done to gain initial stability and that is the key to preventing implant failure. Tapered implants should be chosen for initial stability as well. This is my case. Soft bone is often observed in the upper posterior area where significant time has elapsed after extraction. This patient has taken Fosamax and osteoporosis medication for a long time. In order to place implant in the maxilla, in the mandible, I wanted to get, I failed in getting stability using five millimeter thickness implant. So I changed the six millimeter implant. I was not able to gain initial stability in the maxilla. After four months, I placed the implant. I placed a diameter seven implant. It was very difficult and did the two stage surgery. Second surgery was done three months later, and one month later, prosthetics were delivered. In soft bone, it is difficult to gain initial stability, so you need to do under drilling by one size or two sizes to gain best initial stability. Best way to assess bone density. You can do this using apical image, and you can also do this on panoramic image. You can compare with adjacent bone on the panoramic image. The most accurate is to evaluate using CT. You can accurately see the amount of cortical bone and cancellous bone, and using trichlo pattern, you'd be able to assess whether this is a hard bone, normal, or soft bone. However, my personal favorite is... During surgery, when you do initial drilling, you get resilience. That's the best way to check. Getting good position during initial drilling is very important, but you need to assess the density in order to check whether it is a hard or soft bone, and then choose final drill size during surgery. So accurate assessment during surgery is very important. In general, hard bone is observed a lot in the anterior area, normal, in upper and lower anterior as well as lower posterior region, and soft bone in upper posterior region. In, accordingly with bone density, we need to try to get initial stability. In general, the recommended initial stability is between 20 and 46 Newton. Depending on the state of bone, we have to adjust a final drill and we need to do our best to get the optimum result. Assessing bone quantity. We need to check bone width, buccal lingual distance and bone height, crestoepical distance, bone length, mesiodistal distance. These three factors need to be assessed. The assessment can be done clinically on the model, panoramic image, or CT. Three factors need to be sufficiently addressed, and we have to choose what implant, what thickness, what length we are going to use. We have to choose whether it's going to be one stage or two stage surgery, or if relevant GBR is necessary, or whether you're going to do it without. These preparations need to be done using CT or panoramic image, and sufficient review needs to be done, and diagnosis needs to be made. Let's look at the summary. First, in preoperative consideration, you have to examine the general oral status. You need to look at the hygiene and stability of occlusion, whether the patient has bruxism or parafunction, and whether three fingers can go in, whether the patient's mouth can open well. You need to figure out what caused extraction. Also, at site for surgery, you need to check the shape of ridge and the amount of keratinized tissue, type of periodontium, the status of adjacent and opposing teeth, and the upper anterior, especially the smile line, needs to be evaluated. 
Did you enjoy? When you build a house, the most important thing is doing the groundwork. If you do not focus on the basics, it is like trying to find your way with your eyes closed. Therefore, you need to understand accurately the patient's oral status and then form a treatment plan. I hope this lecture has helped you gain a better understanding on patients' teeth, gingiva, and bone, and also how important accurate diagnosis is. Thank you for listening. I'll come back with an even better lecture.